evening, everyone. Uh, I must say that it's our great, great honor to welcome uh, Ambassador Peter Gorian uh, today, uh, who is the EU uh, Special Representative for, for Central Asia. So welcome, Ambassador Gorian, to, to our institute, to the Central Asia Program, to the IRIS, and to George Washington University. I heard that it's your first time in, uh, exactly. in, this, uh, in this university. For some reason, I don't know what happened, but I never managed to Well, a few words on uh, Ambassador Borian's uh, extremely uh, impressive uh, career. So, Mr. Borian uh, has been uh, the EU Special Representative for the European Union, for Central Asia, sorry, since April uh, 2015. Uh, his big set of responsibilities uh, include providing good and close relations between the Union and the countries of, uh, of Central Asia. Ambassador Burian earned his degree in Oriental Studies in St. Petersburg State University. He continued uh, his diplomatic and international studies at the University of Cairo, then at the Communist University in Bratislava, and at the Diplomatic Academy uh, in Moscow. From 1999 to 2003, uh, Ambassador Burian held the post of head of Slovakia's mission to NATO in Brussels. He was a permanent representative of the uh, Slovak Republic to the United Nations in New York from 2004 to 2008, during which time Slovakia held uh, one of the non-permanent seats uh, of the United Nations Security Council. From 2008 to 2012, uh, Ambassador Burian served as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Slovakia to the United States, here in DC. Uh, from 2012 to 2015, so prior to this, uh, point, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this appointment, Ambassador Burian served as first uh, Deputy Minister and was responsible for areas of security policy, economic diplomacy, development assistance, international organizations, and the territories of the EU Eastern Partnership, Africa, Asia, and Pacific, and Americas. So, uh, Ambassador Borian is staying here for only a few days, a very, very, very short stay. So, uh, Ambassador Borian has a very busy schedule. <laughs> Uh, so we would like to thank you a lot for sparing some time to be to be with us uh, today. And uh, as you know, so as you all know here, uh, the EU has been engaged in Central Asia a lot since uh, uh, the fall of the Soviet Union. The EU uh, well published a strategy for this region in 2007, which has been replaced by a new strategy this year in 2009. So Ambassador Burian is going to address, I mean, this new strategy and the numerous states of uh, the partnership between uh, Central Asia and uh, the European Union. So, Mr. Ambassador, the floor is yours, and thank you again very, very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Once again, good afternoon or good evening, almost. Yeah. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be in Washington, first of all, which uh, was a city where I, I spent the most of my career, actually, uh, almost uh, 10 years. So, yes, so, so it's been a while ten, since I left, but uh, I'm glad that I can compensate my mistake not visiting uh, the George Washington University. And uh, thanks to Sebastian, who uh, came with this initiative and idea and uh, organized at a very short notice uh, this meeting, I, I can be here and uh, share with you some. Uh, basic information on the new strategy. And as uh, Sebastian mentioned, the first strategy uh, the EU has adopted was the region uh, was adopted uh, to, in 2007. And uh, at that time, we really uh, established a very structural relationship and uh, mechanism for uh, cooperation with uh, Central Asia. And uh, now, uh, after 10 years, uh, more than 10 years actually, uh, we decided to elaborate and uh, prepare the new strategy. And maybe you would be interested, uh, what is the difference uh, between two strategies? What is the focus of the new strategy? How uh, this uh, new strategy was prepared? And I think uh, it's actually the major difference uh, here, how the strategy was prepared. Uh, 
um, in close consultations with our partners. Uh, we started actually uh, these consultations uh, two years ago. Uh, there was a very uh, useful meeting of researchers and uh, also practitioners uh, in, in Brussels and uh, we started discussing how we can make uh, our relationship with Central Asia stronger and how we can actually uh, address one thing which uh, was uh, 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 the focus of the previous strategy. We are very much uh, focused on uh, pushing forward uh, regional cooperation between five countries and at the time it was uh, uh, when we started the process, uh, it was not obvious that actually uh, Central Asian countries are eager uh, to cooperate regionally and uh, this was a major challenge actually also for us because we thought uh, uh, when we were developing the strategy in 2007 that uh, immediately uh, this one region uh, where uh, the countries are eager to work together and strengthen uh, regional cooperation, but we soon uh, very much realized uh, this was not the case, that uh, first of all, all five countries were very different, with different ambitions, with different ideas about their uh, belonging uh, uh, and also uh, different levels of economic and social uh, development. And also, second mistakes we uh, made uh, in preparing the 2007 strategy that basically we came with a concept uh, which we thought is right for the region without too much asking uh, our partners uh, what they want, what they expect uh, from uh, European Union and what actually they want to achieve. Uh, so uh, I think we um, uh, learned based on these uh, lessons learned and that's why we also wanted to prepare the strategy in a different way. So uh, once again, we started a very ambitious and large consultation process. First, uh, uh, we organized um, uh, workshops in all five countries, asking actually how is the EU seen uh, in the region by individual countries? Uh, what are the priorities of our countries and how we can help uh, implement uh, implementing them? So I think, in the end, this process, which also involved private sector on both sides, uh, including uh, our member states, uh, also uh, uh, researchers, um, uh, academicians, uh, and also our partners, uh, not only from the region, but also major uh, players, where we also wanted to uh, see how we can uh, uh, cooperate with uh, major players and, and, and so on. I think this produced, uh, I believe, uh, a good document, a good uh, as uh, our partners in Central Asia, uh, named it a very modern, strong vision for the future, which reflected uh, the new realities, uh, uh, new atmosphere in the region, priorities of our partners, and also something which uh, uh, the EU is in a unique position as the entity actually based on regional cooperation and multilateralism to deliver and uh, also in terms of uh, uh, our experience to share with our uh, partners. So uh, in the end, um, we uh, had a quite an easy process uh, for uh, approving the strategy by member states and I have to say that not only because of this <coughs> process but also thanks to him, uh, to it, um, we uh, created a new momentum uh, for uh, strengthening our cooperation. We also raised awareness among the member states of the EU about actually strategic importance uh, of the region for our uh, security interests, for our economic interests, but also for uh, future connectivity, which uh, I will come later to it, between Europe and Asia, where uh, Central Asia represents a very important link uh, for uh, the connectivity in all directions, east, west, uh, west, east, uh, north, south, south, north, and so on. And here, really, uh, only Central Asia, and uh, it was not a coincidence that uh, Central Asia was strategically located uh, during also uh, many years before uh, as a, a strategic point uh, uh, between civilizations and so on. So I think uh, now the understanding, thanks to this uh, consultation process, uh, but also thanks to uh, initiatives, uh, we do not hide that uh, more or less also, we uh, had to react on something China uh, has started, this Belt and Road Initiative, coming with a very ambitious uh, plan of connectivity. 
but uh, uh, again, I will come later uh, to it, uh, probably uh, with lack of experience and more ambition to pursue their national uh, narrow interests, probably not doing things uh, as we would do it. Uh, so we came also quite recently with another strategy, it was uh, in October, uh, just a year ago, uh, for connecting Europe and Asia, where we presented also our vision of connectivity between Europe and Asia, uh, very much focusing on sustainable elements, uh, environmental responsibility, and also economic viability of the project. Once again, reflecting 20 years of our experience in building uh, trans-European uh, transport networks and corridors, economic corridors, including, and really uh, also reflecting something uh, which uh, the EU is based on uh, the principles of single market. But of course, we do not want to impose uh, these principles to anybody. Uh, but we believe also uh, that regional cooperation in general is a very important process which, uh, if not utilized properly, uh, then uh, the problems and challenges which individual countries are, uh, are, are facing uh, cannot be addressed properly and efficiently. So, once again, we have a strategy which is focusing on uh, two priorities. Uh, 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 on one hand, it's partnership for uh, resilience. And resilience probably also uh, needs to be explained what we mean uh, by resilience, uh, because of course it can be uh, interpreted uh, in different ways. But uh, resilience, we mean uh, the ability of uh, countries, societies uh, to, uh, to, to react and uh, resist uh, uh, to external and internal uh, shocks of um, are connected with many uh, different things. Uh, on one hand, uh, as you know, better than I do, uh, Central Asia uh, inherited quite a difficult um, infrastructure, also heritage, uh, and uh, also uh, quite big environmental uh, challenges. All these uh, challenges need to be properly addressed for uh, Central Asia and people uh, to live normal life, uh, and uh, I think this complex of challenges is enormous. Uh, and, uh, uh, then you have also uh, challenges uh, with, uh, connected with lack of uh, economic diversifications. Very much uh, economies focus on uh, paid-on enterprises and lack of integration into uh, global uh, and regional value chains. And uh, this makes also individual countries quite vulnerable, including the strong strongest country, Kazakhstan, which recently uh, went uh, through quite a difficult period. Uh, economically because of their um, uh, reliance on uh, export of uh, energy and so on and very quickly realizing that uh, the economy needs to be diversified and uh, more uh, focus should be done on private sector, small and medium-sized enterprises. So these internal and external changes really uh, can be addressed only when you build proper mechanisms, proper uh, strategies for uh, sustainable development and also when you work together uh, as the region, because uh, let's say uh, this uh, environmental catastrophe, disappearance of RLC, again, cannot be addressed and tackled uh, by one or two individual countries in the region. It should be endeavored once again, where you need to really uh, have uh, regional cooperation and even international efforts for uh, mitigating the impact of this uh, really very difficult uh, tragedy, uh, the disappearance of RLC is uh, influencing the lives of uh, not only people uh, in Uzbekistan or in Kazakhstan, but uh, really in the wide area and even the consequences of this uh, disappearance uh, in a form of uh, salt which being spread uh, to Pamir will be uh, felt also in the future. Even Greenland uh, uh, found some traces of salt uh, and this uh, dust uh, moved uh, by uh, through atmosphere to, to uh, this very uh, big distance. And we strongly believe uh, that also uh, EU uh, can provide a, a good uh, assistance and advice, but in the end uh, the homework should be done by uh, all five uh, countries of the region and uh, here once again 
building capacities, sharing technologies uh, is part of this uh, strategy or addressing uh, the impact of uh, this uh, uh, environmental uh, catastrophe. But uh, also you have uh, consequences uh, of rapidly uh, increasing impact of uh, climate change in the region. Uh, still, a region is uh, rich on water, but uh, once again, uh, if not treated properly, uh, so uh, this water might soon uh, be uh, disappearing and uh, you see uh, very fast uh, uh, melting of glaciers and, and so on. So we want to be sure that all uh, available expertise and uh, uh, capacity building uh, uh, exercise is available uh, uh, and, and uh, reflecting uh, once again our experience from dealing with similar problems. So uh, here we want to use also existing platforms and initiative, uh, rule of law, uh, education and also uh, management of, of uh, natural resources for continuing and supporting regional cooperation uh, between uh, five countries, even uh, 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 larger formats whenever uh, feasible and, and needed. So this is uh, 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 more or less, uh, in a nutshell, a partnership for resilience. Uh, we also are looking very much also to certain uh, and existing security threats and how uh, uh, the, the region, individual countries can build resilience and uh, capacities to, to address, including um, through prevention, and uh, we still believe that prevention is uh, the most efficient way of addressing uh, such phenomenon like uh, violent extremism and uh, also uh, terrorism, which uh, um, of course the, the region is facing a very difficult neighborhood uh, of uh, Afghanistan and uh, once again also domestically there are certain root causes which made uh, people join ISIS and once again we uh, want to work very closely with our partners in building resilience and uh, capacities for addressing uh, the root causes uh, through prevention uh, and also strengthening their border security. Uh, so these are uh, uh, programs which will continue also to be uh, a part of our strategy. And then the new element uh, which is very much focusing on economic reforms and uh, also on uh, uh, diversification of uh, economies is uh, the partnership for prosperity. Once again, we uh, want to work uh, with uh, our partners individually, but also regionally uh, to, to uh, support the reform processes to be uh, um, uh, able to create an enabling environment for uh, private sector development, for investments and uh, also for connectivity to be sustainable and, uh, and uh, achievable. So these two uh, priorities, uh, of course, work uh, very closely with each other. And uh, once again, these priorities were actually identified by our partners and we reflected them. We want to also potentially use uh, something which uh, worked quite efficiently uh, in other relationship, in other partnership, in, including uh, the Eastern Partnership, uh, where we were using actually the experience of uh, our member states, uh, especially those who recently underwent uh, these transformation processes, meaning also my country, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Poland, but uh, in particular, Baltic countries, which uh, are coming from the same kind of uh, history and uh, in, uh, environment uh, and manage uh, within uh, really uh, less than 30 years uh, uh, gain such a position internationally, economically, that this might be really a very good source of inspiration and motivation for our partners in Central Asia. Not repeating the same, uh, uh, every situation uh, is, is unique and the conditions are different, but uh, actually the methodology, the experience and lessons learned, including mistakes which we, uh, uh, new new members of uh, EU uh, uh, committed uh, in our processes of uh, privatization or whatever you have uh, uh, transformation uh, that uh, our partners could could uh, avoid and, and so on. So we are offering these mechanisms like twinning and tags uh, for sharing these experiences, 
And third uh, priority, which is reflected in the strategy, uh, maybe it's not named as a priority, is working together better, uh, supporting regional cooperation once again, without pushing uh, certain models uh, of uh, integration or regional cooperation. And we see that there is a better atmosphere in the region, better understanding uh, about the value of regional cooperation, which was also <coughs> reflected uh, during the first uh, uh, consultative summit of leaders of Central Asia, um, actually two years ago now already, in, uh, in uh, Nur Sultan or Astana, when they, uh, five countries, met together and defined their, uh, their uh, priorities and also agreed that uh, they need to address them through uh, increase and strengthen regional cooperation, and we very much want to uh, support it. Then, uh, once again, without uh, uh, actually promoting any kind of particular model, but uh, I was pleased to uh, hear that uh, President Nazarbayev actually referred to Visegrad 4 uh, uh, kind of cooperation, which is uh, really uh, not inst uh, very much institutional or a very heavy kind of uh, uh, bureaucratized uh, system, uh, but rather uh, uh, defined by uh, four countries uh, uh, based on rotation of presidencies. The priorities uh, are set uh, for one year and then implemented together. And the only actually institution uh, for uh, uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, existing is the Visegrad Fund, uh, financing certain joint activities for education uh, and, and and so on. But very much. Uh, this uh, cooperation, uh, when uh, I refer to Visegrad 4, but you can also uh, look at uh, Baltic countries' uh, cooperation, helped us actually to uh, uh, also uh, uh, understand uh, that along with uh, general integration, uh, you need to start from, uh, from integrating and cooperating between your neighbors. Whatever kind of affiliation they have, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of... Uh, 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 part of uh, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, inf uh, of uh, integration uh, entity they are. Uh, regardless of this uh, kind of affiliations, uh, you need to find a proper way uh, of cooperation. So, uh, when referring to this neighborhood, uh, uh, we also reflected in the strategy uh, based on uh, actually suggestions uh, coming from. Uh, from uh, 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 our partners uh, in the region, uh, the need, I mean, to uh, to, to cooperate uh, on certain regional issues, and uh, we very much welcome a new atmosphere coming from Kazakhstan, from Uzbekistan, uh, understanding that uh, to have a, a stability, they also uh, uh, need to uh, support their uh, less fortunate neighbor, uh, Afghanistan, and. Uh, uh, we are very much pleased that uh, countries of the region are opening uh, our formats uh, for participation of Afghans. We have high-level political and security dialogue after uh, two meetings without the presence of Afghanistan. Now, already for second year, Afghanistan is a full part of our discussions on uh, security cooperation. Before, they were sitting outside of uh, the, the meeting room and only join uh, others uh, for lunch uh, discussing regional issues. Now they are even uh, sitting when we discuss uh, uh, implementation of our strategy. And of course, uh, EU has a different strategy for Afghanistan. So we believe, uh, again, this should be a matter of time when uh, actually Afghanistan will be able to fully join the region, but uh, once again, uh, we very much welcome this understanding that uh, neighbors should uh, help uh, uh, their other neighbors, I mean, to stabilize and then they will benefit from um, the, the stable uh, space and also connectivity. And this is uh, probably one more uh, topic which I would like to refer because I, I mentioned the connectivity in the, in the beginning. We see that uh, there are very important processes uh, uh, and uh, Central Asia was uh, uh, not so fortunate to be uh, 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 connected uh, with uh, outside uh, world. Uh, uh, mostly uh, all the connections were built through Moscow, through, uh, uh, through Russia, uh, which 
also in a way make uh, these countries vulnerable and depending on uh, a big neighbor. Uh, of course, uh, we are not saying that uh, uh, the country should not cooperate or uh, build the connectivity this way, but the, the closest uh, actually uh, port is uh, on the south uh, uh, in um, uh, Pakistan or in, in Iran, and also uh, it creates certain diversification of uh, export routes and many other things. So we think that this is a very healthy uh, process to build the connectivity in all directions and also diversify uh, export routes for energy uh, and uh, also for uh, the products. And uh, once again, we see uh, this appetite uh, of, uh, uh, of countries of the region to find uh, new markets and we very much want to support it also through our connectivity strategy where, uh, once again, we do not want to compete uh, or uh, put our strategy in opposition to China, to Belt and Road Initiative, but we want to uh, present uh, um, our way of uh, uh, doing connectivity, once again, in a sustainable and environmentally responsible and economically uh, viable. Uh, manner uh, based on our uh, experience, not focusing on outdated technologies, but rather looking uh, to something which, uh, once again, uh, our partners can benefit, uh, most uh, cleanest uh, kind of technologies, green um, technologies and e-mobility. is something uh, really worth investing money rather than to second-hand uh, kind of uh, industries and, and so on. And uh, just uh, 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 by the end of this month, we will be organizing uh, a conference uh, for uh, presenting uh, already uh, mechanisms and uh, also financial means uh, and also the way how we want to uh, implement this connectivity strategy to our partners and also moving to regional partnerships on connectivity also with Central Asia uh, for your information during uh, the uh, presidency of Romania, uh, there was a first meeting when we presented the, the connectivity strategy and we found a very good response of our partners. So now uh, we want to uh, establish uh, a partnership <coughs> with Asia as part of our strategy for sustainable uh, connectivity as a platform uh, for promoting rules-based uh, and um, also uh, very much uh, uh, market-based uh, approach uh, to, to connectivity with all, once again, elements of uh, environmental uh, uh, and uh, financial and uh, other uh, kind of uh, uh, elements of sustainability. And uh, probably I would uh, stop on one uh, additional uh, platform which will be uh, uh, established based on initiative of Kyrgyzstan, very much also connected with uh, uh, the uh, idea of partnership for prosperity. Based on uh, the idea and initiative of Kyrgyzstan, uh, we'll be organizing together uh, in uh, 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 spring next year uh, the first uh, first uh, economic forum EU Central Asia uh, for actually discussing how to support uh, uh, economic transformations, connectivity and uh, uh, integration into global value chains uh, of uh, our partners uh, uh, and uh, so this will be also a very good opportunity to establish a process where we will be not only discussing but also uh, defining uh, projects. Uh, but first of all, uh, uh, creating an enabling environment uh, for uh, our uh, businesses to uh, be interested in the region and uh, to contribute uh, to economic and uh, social development of the region. And last but not least, uh, uh, because I was only very positive about everything, of course we uh, also register uh, uh, challenges in, in uh, individual uh, countries uh, of uh, the region. Uh, we fully understand that they are coming from a very difficult uh, heritage uh, uh, which was left after uh, Soviet Union uh, and that they ha will have to cope with it in terms of uh, uh, treatment of citizens, respecting basic freedoms, human rights and so on. And we very much uh, 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 appreciate that uh, 
uh, there is a growing understanding that these values like human rights, uh, rule of law, uh, good governance, uh, fighting corruption are not considered by our partners as uh, some Western concept. Uh, uh, we found these elements very clearly without any pressure uh, identified as priorities within their national development strategies. Having said that, of course, uh, the major challenge is their implementation. But we firmly believe, uh, 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 I mean, these values uh, are very important for uh, 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 countries of the region to fully benefit from their uh, potential. I think providing more space for civil society, for uh, really respect of human rights, uh, 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 freedom of media, you also give uh, your citizens the responsibility and also uh, feeling of uh, participation in uh, all these difficult uh, processes. We had it uh, also in uh, 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 Central Europe. Without a really active uh, role uh, of civil society, without uh, facilitating the dialogue and also providing an independent expertise, uh, I don't think we would be able to manage this uh, difficult transformation process in this very short period of time. That's why also I'm pleased that uh, our partners embrace the idea of uh, having regular fora uh, uh, involving civil society uh, back to back with uh, our ministerial meeting uh, in July in Bishkek for the first time we organize uh, the civil society forum for generating ideas how to implement the strategy, how to benefit uh, from the role uh, of civil society and also how to uh, work with youth uh, and how to also benefit from this enthusiasm and also how to uh, focus on gender issues uh, and women as agents of change in very important processes which I mentioned in addressing uh, the responsible treatment of environment and many other things. So uh, I think uh, this showing uh, a new uh, kind of level of partnership uh, between EU and Central Asia based <coughs> on a mutual uh, kind of respect but also a frank, uh, frank, um, frank uh, uh, dialogue uh, on issues which we see as problematic in their development. We do not want to teach uh, our partners uh, 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 far from it, but uh, once again, we uh, have accumulated, uh, accumulated this kind of collective experience of 28 uh, countries, which again is at your disposal because uh, again, uh, during our uh, transformation processes in Central uh, Europe and so on, we very much relied on uh, support of EU. You do not have this kind of direct support. You have it through development uh, programs and uh, various uh, kind of uh, uh, mechanisms of cooperation, but not in this kind of magnitude. That's why you have to be even more uh, uh, focused on doing the right things at the right time. And uh, once again, EU wants to be your partner and uh, a strong uh, uh, ally, if you wish, uh, in, in, in these processes. And uh, I think, uh, I hope that uh, this uh, new strategy will be fully uh, translated into uh, reality. Uh, I think without uh, this uh, concrete implementation, it will be only a nice paper, but uh, we see uh, really a good appetite and good understanding uh, that together we can uh, do things uh, uh, better, but really uh, uh, it should be based on your ownership and uh, regional leadership. So I would stop here. I, I spoke for too long. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how we see uh, the region. And probably one last sentence why I'm here. Uh, uh, we believe also synergy of, uh, uh, of donors' activities, different programs, uh, is very much needed for using the money, uh, which are uh, actually shrinking also uh, in, in the budgets uh, of individual donors uh, even more efficiently. But I was pleased also to hear at the NSC, uh, uh, at the State Department, uh, a strong commitment actually to work in Central Asia, uh, actually uh, promoting the same uh, values and also what uh, uh, is, is uh, important in this regard, and I wanted to mention it, that in spite of our problems uh, uh, in uh, 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 Europe, uh, uh, also uh, uh, scarce finances and other uh, many challenges, we very much uh, uh, are committed to support this strategy 
also in the new budget uh, for 2021 uh, 20, uh, until 27, this multi-annual uh, financial framework uh, uh, will also create a new uh, instruments uh, for our cooperation, which will be called neighborhood development and international cooperation uh, instruments, actually uh, with uh, increase by 30% uh, of uh, money available for external action se uh, service, 90 billion uh, will be devoted to various programs uh, of external action, of course coming from security investments and many other things, and uh, I hope that really Central Asia uh, will not uh, uh, be forgotten uh, and and it's really very good that we have uh, the, the uh, new strategy when the new commission uh, starts its its business as a very solid basis for our uh, our engagement in the region so we are very, very